wonderful world of Disney. nothing in here except wrapped packages. Uh, where do you get this stuff about Annie the Shop? That's who she is, Mr. Gillard. I've seen her poster. I'd know Annie the Shop anywhere. Well, here, I'd like to see her prove she's not. Uh, madam, do you have any identification, please? Definitely. Thank you, madam. Uh, Mrs. J.P. Collingsworth, 1845 Primero Road. <laughs> Your husband couldn't be. It's such a wild coincidence. You cert you mean your husband's name is Mayor John, John P. Collingsworth. No, I guarantee you, Mike, you are on the carpet. The mayor's called me five times. I don't know what to tell him. Tell him the truth. Tell him it was just a case of mistaken identity. It happens all the time. No, no. Can't pass it off that easily. Now, the mayor's wife was virtually accosted on a crowded street in broad daylight and accused of being a shoplifter by your daughter. All right, I'll call the mayor personally and I'll have Mike write a letter of apology to his wife. Will that get you off the hook? Well, yeah, that ought to do it. Well, what did you call her? Who? Your daughter. Oh, you mean Mike? Yeah, Mike. That's her name? Yeah, well, I guess I'm to blame for that. You see, after she was born, the doctor told us we couldn't have any more children. Well, there's always been a Michael O'Hara around, so I insisted on the name, figured we could always call her Michelle. When my wife passed away, she was still little, and the kids started calling her Mike, and when she grew up, she liked it, so I'm stuck. Yeah. You know something? I think it suits her. Mm -hmm. Now, you make sure you call the mayor's office as soon as I get back to my office. After what happened today, how do you get up the nerve to come in here? Well, it wasn't easy, but I said to myself, Mike, 
Why ruin the carpets at home? There has to be blood on the floor. Why not down here at the station house where they're used to it? Very funny. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause you a problem. I know you don't mean to, but somehow you always do. Yeah, well, I guess I do, Dad, but this time it really looked like Annie the shop. You should have seen her. She... I know, and Mike, everybody looks like somebody else, and I always wind up looking like a fool. Well, I didn't mean for that to happen. You see, Dad, I was only trying to help. Will you believe me when I tell you I don't need your help? Yeah. I'm beginning to. Good. And it won't happen again. Good. So long. <laughs> The thing that's really stopping us is lack of concentration. You know, a few phony bills turn up on the north side, so we alert the local merchants and stake out a few agents, and then he hits us on the south side. We do the same thing there, and then he turns up in uh, Rivers Bend or Caraway Corners. Oh, well, the big hex on the whole deal are the bills themselves. You know, you need a magnifying glass to spot a phony. What a set of plates this guy must have. Uh, that's Charlie Grady for you, a real pro. It'll take us a while to get him, but we'll put him away. Oh, have you got a tail in it? Yeah. Hmm. But as you say, he's a real pro. He knows when he's being watched. Oh, we shook him down a couple of times, but uh, he was clean. Mike, didn't you say you had a list of all the people in the area with the records? Oh, oh, yeah. I left them on a coat. I'll get them. Oh, hi, Mike. I didn't hear you come in. Oh, you know me, Dad. I'm just the quiet type. Well, the quiet type, get ready for a surprise. Joe and Charlie are in town, and they're staying for dinner. Oh, oh. But... <laughs> Hi. Oh, this isn't Mike, is it? Mm-hmm. Mike, you grew a foot since I last saw you. You know, it's hard to believe this is the same scrawny kid that used to get in her dad's hair all the time. Well, she's not the same scrawny kid anymore, but she still gets in my hair all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you better go on upstairs and get dressed for dinner. Oh, Dad, I can't stay for dinner. Remember I told you I was going to go to Barb's tonight? Oh, that's right. Well, now, look, don't you kids go get in there. Now, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen. Oh, I'm sorry that I can't stay for dinner, but you're just going to talk about business anyway, right? Well, okay, you run along. Okay, bye-bye. Stay out of trouble. Oh, for sure. Take it easy, Mike. Yeah, we'll see you, Mike. Boy, has she grown up. <laughs> she sure has. Charlie, I had these made up in triplicate in case you want to delegate them to some of the boys. I don't really think it's going to matter much, because we know who our man is. But then, sometimes the unexpected does happen. Well, I'm making book as Charlie Grady. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Mr. O'Hara, dinner's ready. Oh, thank you. Shall we? Charlie, is there any football? No, not lately, Mike. But they got us on this basketball program. We work out once a week. You too, Joe? Yeah, they have uh, teams A, blue, and B, C teams. Really keeps you going, I'm good. I don't get up. <laughs> Given two years probation. Hey, isn't he that nice guy who works at Pete's gas station? Mm -hmm. Wake up. Yeah, yeah. No wonder they gave him probation. He's probably not even guilty. Mike, why are you worrying about it? I mean, the FBI has a copy. They'll check it out. They don't take these things seriously to them. It's just routine. Why are you worrying about it? Because I have to get my dad off the hook. <laughs> That's a switch. What? You have to get your dad off the hook? It's a switch. Well, he's looking for the wrong guy. He thinks it's Charlie Grady. Heck, that doesn't make sense. Why would he come back to the same town where he was convicted and start up the same operation again? He'd have to be crazy. Hey, do you think someone's cashing in on the fact that Charlie's back in town? Exactly. 
Any counterfeiting mm. that's going on, he's going to be blamed for, right? Yeah. He is a perfect pigeon for some smart operator. And I think the smart operator is right here on this page. Now let's go. Oh, oh, look at this one, will ya? Aristotle Marino, convicted of forgery in 1936, served one year state prison, convicted again 1940 for cashing $50,000 <gasps> of worthless traveler's checks, pleaded guilty and served five more years in state prison. Among other alias, sometimes known as Artie the Artist. Artie the Artist. You don't think it's that weirdo that runs a drugstore, do you? The same. Can you imagine him, Artie the Artist? Hey, you know, Mike, you might just have something. What? Well, look. Look, he's taken out this big ad in the paper. Huh, I mean, that must have cost him a bundle. As a new service to our customers, we're now cashing all payroll checks. With yeah, or without yeah. purchase? So uh, lots of stores cash payroll checks. Mm. Yeah, but they don't take out big ads to advertise it. Yeah. He's cashing those checks with phony money. Yeah, kind of all fits. Sure does. All right, this is what we have to do. One of us has to get a job down there. We've got to get something concrete on him. I guess the only one that could work down there would be someone like a soda jerk. Who do we know that's a soda jerk? Norman. Norman? Norman. Well, Norman, my boy, I have some more deliveries for you to make when you're through with the floor. That is, if you're not too busy at the counter. Yes, sir. Well, boy. Norman is my darling, my darling. Norman is my darling. Norman is my boy. What's that all about? I don't know. He sure is weird. Yeah, he's a creep. I gotta get back to work. Norman, wait a minute. Norman. Norman, do you think you could watch him and find out the combination to that safe? Now, that would be almost impossible. It opens with a key. Norman. When you make deliveries, does he just give you the key to the truck? No, he gives me the whole keychain. Why? Norman, my boy, Mrs. Peterson wants the usual prescription right away, quick. Okay, Mr. Marino. Listen, I better go before we blow our cover. You're doing a great job. Thanks. Never mind, put that down and take this or she'll be ringing that phone and my ears will fall off. Go on, but wait a minute, wait. As long as you're going to Mrs. Peterson, take the rest of the prescriptions too. Norman, my boy, how will you start the truck? Oh, the keys. The keys, the keys. And Norman, I want you to come right back. I don't like you to hang yourself up in the town. I like to come and clean up those front windows. They're going to look, it's a disgrace. Uh, I'll be right back, sir. Still window, the floor, deliveries. Why I forgot myself talking to this thing anyway. Hi. What are you doing in here? Well, I just thought you'd drop me off somewhere. Oh, well, where do you want to go? Well, it can't be too far. I have to hurry back and wash the windows. Oh, no, no. It's just up to Ken's key shop. Oh, I guess that's okay. What, you didn't lose your keys or something? No, but it never hurts to have spares. That is good thinking. You know, you never know when you're going to lose one, and when you do, it's always a problem. That's right, and that's why I think Mr. Marino needs a duplicate set. Mike, if you think I'm going to be any party to what I think you're thinking about, then you have another thought coming. Norman, don't get excited. I just want to borrow the keys for a few minutes. Yeah, and make a duplicate set and break into Marino's, and Mike, that is criminal. Criminal? The man is a counterfeiter. We have to break into his safe and check out the bills to prove anything. Do you know, it is practically our civic duty. No, no, no. You just don't understand anything, do you? Oh, okay, Mike, I understand, and I'll let you have the keys. But what you do with them is your own business. I am not becoming involved. You understand that? I am not becoming involved. You nervous? I just have to check these bills. Cat soups. Let's do that. It's Marino.
do it. Good luck. I'm at the store. I have it. I'll bring it to you. All my prescription. I forgot about that. Oh, Norman, please be quiet. Oh, if I didn't have Don't it, I wouldn't need it. I'd bring it. This. He'd never yeah. believe anybody could fit in here. Yeah. I'm worried, worried, worried. That's right. The police will be looking for someone who limps. Right. So you have no problem. There's nothing to worry about. Now you just need a good night's sleep. I'll let myself in. Oh, I'll take you to the door. Uh, oh, my leg's still awfully sore. Oh, oh, be careful. I ought to walk it out a bit. Oh, uh, hi, oh. Dad. Oh, uh, where are you going so late? Oh, something's come up and they need me at the station right away. What's with you, Norman? Uh, well, it, it's just that I got a Charlie horse in my leg. From just walking? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, it happened some time ago. Uh, a reoccurring football injury. Oh, I didn't know you played football. I don't. I, I mean, I, I did. Well, it's, it's just that it's kind of hard to explain. Well, at any rate, Norman, if you have a Charlie horse, the only thing you can do is work it out. Good night. Good night. Be careful, Dad. 
Night. Instant jail. Mike, if Marino reports what happened, the police will be looking for a limping man, and your dad just saw me limping. Norman, why do you think I brought up the football injury? That'd clear you in a minute. Mike, do I look like I played football? Oh, maybe not first string. But my dad would never suspect you. Well, that's real easy for you to say, but I have the feeling I'm heading for jail. Oh, Norman, come on. You just need a good night's sleep. And I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah. Sleep. I thought they were going to come and arrest me. So I came over here and the guy with the water squirted me. What guy? The guy who cleaned the street. He cleaned me too. Here, wait. Sit on this. Mike, your dad doesn't know about last night, does he? No. As a matter of fact, I called Andy down at the station house. And he said that the only thing that was reported last night was some kind of gas station uh, stick-up. You mean Marino didn't report it? No. Now, that's kind of strange in itself. Norman, he is hiding something. I think if we just play it cool, we'll find out what that is. Okay. But you know what we're going to do tonight? What? We're going to go out to a movie or something or anything. But we're going to take a vacation for Marino for a change, okay? Okay. Okay. Where are we going? Dry it around and dry it off. Oh. Twelve fifty-seven, player. Well, hour speaking. Oh, hello, Artie. How goes it? Well, everything's been fine until recently, Captain. What's the matter? You sure you don't know? Come on, I'm busy. What is it? Well, I got a feeling I've been looked over by your men. I know there is some hot money floating around, but I've been through with that kind of thing for a long time. Oh, I catch you now, Artie. A few of the Treasury boys are down here on it. They check everybody out. It's part of their routine. There's nothing to it. Yeah, but going through the bills in my safe? Oh, I'm sorry about that. I didn't think these guys were the type to get overtrained. I'll take care of it right now. Besides, I'm pretty sure we've got our man. All right, thank you. Right. Bye. Oh, hi, Mike. Cup of coffee? No, thanks. Which one of you checked out Marino? Who? Artie Marino, one of the guys on the list I gave you the other night. Oh, yeah. I haven't had a chance to check anybody on that list yet, Mike. How about you, Joe? No, I've spent all my time keeping track of this Grady. Who got the other copy of the list? Mike, I know you said there were three copies, but yesterday when Joe opened the briefcase, we only found two. Yeah, that's right, Mike. There's only two. I only made three copies. I don't know what to tell you, Mike. We only found two. <clears throat> hmm? Oh, hi, Dad. Are you waiting up for me? Mm-hmm. Well, I am flattered. Uh-oh. Mike, I think it's about time you and I had a little chat about the facts of life. Oh, Dad, you're kidding. I've known about that stuff for years, you know that. You may think you do, but there's one little fact you don't know. All right, I'll bite. What's this one little fact I don't know? You ready? Yes. Repeat after me. Yes, sir. It is not? It is not. Artie Moreno. Artie Moreno. Now go to bed. Say it again. It is not Artie Marino. Louder. It is not Artie Marino. Again. It, it is, is not, not Artie, Artie Marino. Marino. All right. <laughs> What's your 
funny. <laughs> I was just thinking about the other night. With old man Marino firing after you. You limping out of there. <laughs> that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Frank, that <clears throat> wasn't funny. It was terribly painful and almost disastrous. I know it. You know what? Well, I know you were good. Just great throughout the whole thing. I meant what I said the other night about you being sweet. this broadcast to bring you an important news bulletin. Captain Michael O'Hara announced that local police, cooperating with the FBI, raided an abandoned barn on Cavendish Road tonight, discovering and destroying the printing press used in making the counterfeit bills that have been plaguing the city. The all-important plates used in printing the bills were confiscated by the Treasury. The counterfeiter was not captured. However, an eyewitness saw a green 1967 panel truck leaving the premises 15 minutes before the raid. Marino. Norman. The Queen delivery truck. Norman, it has to be him. Yeah, you're probably right. But there isn't anything we can do about it anymore. Well, the only thing to do now is to bring it up to your dad. I can't bring up Marino to my dad. He'd kill me. Okay, okay Mike. My dad? Okay, oh. okay. But, but listen, we have to be sensible about this thing. Now, the United States Treasury Department has sent men into this town to track down the counterfeiter. Your dad has maybe 15 guys at his disposal. The law enforcement agencies Norman, are extinct. Norman, what? what is the most valuable thing to a counterfeiter more than life itself? I don't know. Well, think. Uh... Do you give up? Yeah. The plates he uses to print the bills on now, a good set, a really good set, is worth a fortune. What's that got to do with us? Well, don't you see? That's how we nail Marino. We make him think we know where they are. But we don't know where they are. We don't have to. We just put on this little act. A, a little act? Norman, don't think about that. Now, this is what we're gonna do. Gee, these are awfully good sandwiches, Mr. Marino. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> How did the shopping go this morning? Uh, well, I had to pass on that. But wait till I tell you what happened. What? Well, I had to run an errand for my dad. You know, that's usually a drag. Well, this time it wasn't. I had to deliver some papers to that Rodriguez fellow. He's a treasury agent who is staying at the Dinsmore Hotel. What's so exciting about that? Well, he's one of the guys who was in the raid the other night. And he has those confiscated plates right in his hotel room. Yeah? I saw them. They're worth a fortune to the counterfeiter. Why would he keep something that valuable in his hotel room? That's kind of crazy. No, it isn't. He's got them locked in his briefcase. Anyway, he's leaving for Washington tomorrow, and he's sure they'll prove the identity of the counterfeiter. Isn't he afraid someone will break into his hotel room and steal his briefcase? No, because nobody knows they're there. Excuse me. I hate to interrupt, but would you mind passing the hot sauce? Thank you very much. I don't understand this plan at all. Why do you have to make the phone call from here? Norman, don't be so nervous. All we have to do is get Agent Rodriguez out of his room and we set the trap. You know, that really does look like a treasury man's briefcase. This is a cinch. You know, Mike, I wish I could be as sure about this thing as you are, but Marino didn't have the slightest interest in what we were talking about. Oh, that's just an act. He's plenty interested, believe well, it me. It didn't seem that way to me. I guarantee he's going to be at Rodriguez's hotel room tonight and he's going to come walking out with that briefcase. But first of all, we have to get the briefcase in there. How are we going to do that? Well, that's easy. Barry's working there tonight. Barry? Barry Schreiberg. I can handle him. Yeah, it's Barry Schreiber. I know who he is. What are you doing? I'm calling the Dinsmore Hotel. 
My Oh, you better talk to Rodriguez. He'll oh, recognize no, I'm not my good voice. At that sort of thing. I, He'll know. I wouldn't know what to say. Well, say what I was going to say. Say anything. Just get him out of the room tonight. Agent Rodriguez, please. Are you the party who tried to get him earlier? Uh, uh, no. This is the first time I've called. Somebody else is trying to get him. That's Marino. When he calls back and he's not there, he'll move right in. Rodriguez speaking. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Rodriguez, uh, you don't know me, but I have some information on the counterfeiter. Uh, in fact, uh... I know for sure who he is. Your name and address, please. He wants my name and address. You don't give it to him. I, I can't give you that. Uh, I mean, if you could meet me later tonight, I, I could give you all the information you need. You sound nervous, mister. Is there anything the matter? I think I'm being watched. Well, where would you like to meet? At the shopping center in Medford. Under the clock. I I'll be there around 10. Medford, man, that's 20 miles from here. Well, that's the best I can do. All right. I'll be there at 10. But when I get there, you better have something. Don't worry. I'll have plenty. You just make sure you're there. Normie, you're super. Rodriguez speaking. Hello? I know who the counterfeiter is. What do you mean you know who the counterfeiter is? Who is this? He'll be at 160 Langton Road at 10 o'clock tonight. I'll explain everything. 160 Langton Road. You know, what I don't get is why somebody wants to get me out of my hotel room. You know, that first call, that didn't bother me. It was obviously some kind of nut. But that second call, now that was legitimate. Well, it probably won't prove anything, but we ought to check it out anyway. At this stage of the game, we can use any kind of a lead. Hey, Mike. Hey. Hi, Barry. Hey. How are you? Gee, it's great to see you. Good to see you, too. Hi, Norman. Hi, Barry. Barry, you look just terrific. What have you been doing? Have you been working out? Well, you know me, I like to keep in shape. So I see. Well, it sure would be great to hit the beach again this summer. Hey, that'd be great, huh? Yes. <clears throat> oh, uh... Barry, uh... Is, uh, Mr. Rodriguez in? No, he's out. He won't be back till about 11. But you can leave that with me. I'll be sure he gets it. Oh, no, I, I couldn't do that, Barry. He told me not to give it to anyone else. Mm. You know, secret stuff. Barry. Why don't you give me the key to his room and I'll drop the briefcase off myself? Well, they're, they're kind of tight about that. Please. Okay. Here. Thanks, Barry. Should bring it right back, though, okay? Oh, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Bye. 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 Wait, 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 wait. Tinsmore Hotel. Oh, no. Uh, Agent Rodriguez is out. Yeah, he won't be back till about 11. Marino. Of course I'm sure. Close it. Go, Norman, go. But, but wait a minute, Mike. Wait. What? Did you hear that phone call? Yeah, boy, is Marino falling for this. Now, Rodriguez is going to be gone till 11 o'clock. And I guarantee you, between now and then, Marino's going to slip in and get this briefcase. He'd have to. Gad, Zooks, this is brilliant. Now, 424 has got to be down here. Oh, oh, wait. Norman, you better wait right here in case Rodriguez comes back unexpectedly. He won't. But if he does, you have to set up a delaying tactic. Now, I'm not going to be long. Well, wait, what are we going to do after that? Oh, you and I are going to be outside the room. And when Marino comes out, we're going to nail him. Now, I've got Barbs and Wilma stationed outside the fire escapes. They're going to alert us. 
How are they going to alert us? Oh, right. I forgot to tell you. By radio. Here, look. Radio? Where did you get any radio? Hold that and I'll show you. This is for you. This is for you. Now, mine's in here. Barb's and Wilma has their own. But Mike, these are my radios. Of course. I borrowed them from your house. You mean you went into my house and took out my valuable radio equipment? Right, well, we have to have some means of communication, Norman. Mike, these aren't toys. You have to know how to operate them. You don't expect those two flaky girls to be able to handle equipment like this, do you? Yes, I do. Norman, sometimes you're just too technically scientific. Yeah, and you're brilliant. clear over second station check in barbs and wilma do you read me well maybe we uh, uh, yeah yeah uh ready here roger over stand by roger we'll go over and out
our own self business. I'm scared. How are we gonna get out of here? I don't know. Mike! Mike! What are you two doing here? We came to warn you Marino's up here. Well, why didn't you use your radios? That's what they're for. We tried. That tiny thing's broken. Oh, our communications are severed. Look, we're gonna have to wait until he gets the briefcase, and then well, we can bust out of here. We sure are scrunched. <laughs> the hall from mine, so if anybody comes in or out, we'll nab him. Mike. Mike, where are you? Look, if this is some kind of joke, it's not very funny. Come in, Mike. In Rodriguez's bedroom. Mike, somebody is coming. Marino's on his way in. Barbs, do you read me? Wilma, wh where is everybody? Nutty phone call to Rodriguez about meeting him under the clock. I should have known. Yeah, but but it worked. Dad, I don't mean to brag, but I knew all along that it was. Yes, Mike. Charlie Grady. Yes. Charlie Grady. Well, we did it. Yeah, but I'm not sure what we did. <laughs> Come on. Norman, your palms are sweaty. They are? I'm sorry. Uh, it's uh, just that I've been through a lot lately. Oh? Do they always do that? <laughs> hey, it, it's still early. Why don't we do something? Oh, it's just that I promised Barb's and Wilma that I'd come over and spend the night. Oh, well, that's okay. What? Uh, that's okay. I I'll see you tomorrow. You know, I don't think I'll go over to Barb's tonight. You don't? Well, you just said that... You know why? Why? Because I'd just probably get bored, and then I'd call you up on the phone and ask you to come over and pick me up and take me for a ride so we could listen to some music. Maybe go up to Flat Top. It's a great view from up there. And it's a beautiful night.
ask you to take me out to dinner tonight, Captain. Yeah, Dad. Well, it's my pleasure. I haven't had Chinese food in a long time, and frankly, I'm looking forward to it. Captain, you want it on the telephone. It's an emergency. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. You know what I remember about Chinese restaurants? They can fix peas so that they don't even taste like peas. You ever notice that? No, they no, this it? is no time to talk about peas. She said it was an emergency. Out! Stuart Kraft killed? When did they find him? Well, listen, send two cars over there, and I'll, I'll get there as soon as I can. Yeah, and uh, uh, put Lieutenant Carlson on the phone. Stuart Kraft killed. I'll have one of the officers drive you two home. Oh, no, Dad. We just as soon listen to some music. All right, have it your way. 1235, All right, let's go. Go? Go where? Herman, you don't think we're going to stay here when something that big is going on? I Come thought on. we were going to listen to some music. Come on, Herman. Hurry! No. Uh, well, uh, I come by earlier. I notice the light on, so I figure Mr. Kraft work it late. Then I come uh, 10.30. The light's still on. Now I have to get the room cleaned up, so I come in. There he was, dead. Were you able to locate uh, Mr. Parsons, his partner yet? Yeah, he's in his office making a few calls. Good. Uh, Mr. Grabowski, did you see anyone leave the building late tonight? Yes. A man leave maybe 8.30. He went through rear entrance. I was mopping downstairs at the time. I heard a noise and turned, but he was already through the door. And you, uh, you didn't recognize him? <laughs> no, I don't know who he was. I only saw his back. Well, who else had a key to get in here after working hours besides Kraft and Parsons? And just the other three executives. I asked them to come over here. They're in there now. Good, Stan. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Grabowski. We'll get in touch with you. Oh, Mike. The, uh... Awfully sorry to hear about this, John. Yeah, it's pretty terrible, all right? I just don't understand how anybody can do anything like this. The uh, immediate staff's in my office. Captain O'Hara, Ms. Davis and Miss Reed, our secretaries. Mm -hmm. Richard Caffey, vice president in charge of sales. Harvey. Bob Becker, head of auditing. Becker. And John Stevens, personnel manager. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Caffey, can you explain your whereabouts this evening? Hey, I went over to the park. There's a uh, band concert held there every Thursday evening. I stayed for a while and I went home. We were alone? Yes. Did you see anybody you knew? Uh, no. No, as a matter of fact, I didn't. Mr. Becker. I spent a quiet evening at home watching television. It was a, an old-time movie. Um, the Hangman of Horse Creek. Oh, uh, I went for a long walk, as I do every evening. Dr. Zorla's... If you'd like to check, I picked up a newspaper at Marino's Drugstore about uh, 9.30. Yeah, I'll check on us, Mr. Stevens. John? Well, I felt a little under the weather, so I took it easy and just stayed home. Was your missus at home? Oh, no, no. She went to play bridge at the Lasky's. Well, that'll be all, gentlemen. Oh, if any of you has any intentions of leaving town, would you please check with my office before doing so? Thank you. Stan, don't let anybody touch anything in Kraft's office. How many bullet wounds in the body? Just one. 
have the boys go over everything for fingerprints and don't disturb the body until the coroner gets here. You call the coroner. Puff. It certainly was loud enough. Boy, the papers are sure making a big thing out of this. Well, it's got to be one of the four. They're the only ones that have a key. Yeah, well, if you ask me, it's that Mr. Becker fellow. What makes you say that? Well, he's the accountant, isn't he? I mean, it's always the accountant who's guilty. Uh -huh. And besides, you know, he really looks the type, you know, close eyes. He doesn't have close eyes. What do you mean he doesn't have close eyes? Wait a minute. Eyes? What does close eyes have to do with this? It has plenty to do with it. Have you ever seen someone with close eyes who wasn't a criminal? Wilma, I've never seen anybody with close eyes. Well, it has nothing to do with the way a person looks. Physiognomy. Fizzy what? Ognomy. Now, the real problem here is that my dad just can't crack their alibis. Boy, he really needs my help. Mike, did you ever stop to think your father might not want your help? Oh, oh, Mr. O'Hara. Oh, excuse me. It might be important. Mr. Commissioner. Yeah, I know, but look. One guy goes to a band concert alone. Another one sits and watches TV alone. Another one takes a walk alone. Now, I know they can't prove they did these things, but I can't prove that they didn't. You could prove it if you found one that had a motive. Well, they all had motives. And the partner had him insured, and the personnel manager is his nephew who stands to inherit a piece of the business. And the accountant could have... Mike, what? I understand your problem, Mike, but I don't think the mayor does. Dan, tell the mayor to give me a little more time. And don't worry, I'll smoke him out. Smoke him out. That's it. That's what we gotta do. Smoke who out? A killer. You see, there's no such thing as the perfect crime. There's always someone who sees something. Some kind of eyewitness. Well, there was a janitor. That's right. The janitor said he saw someone leave through the rear about 8.30. They didn't know who he was. Now, let's just say, for instance, that there was someone loitering in the hall in that alley. He could have seen the killer. Yeah, but who would have been loitering in the alley? Well, let's just say, for example, it could have been, I mean, just offhand, you. Me? I don't loiter in alleys. No, no, no I didn't say it was you. I just said, for example. I know, but it's that for example business that gets me worried. No, no, no. Look, if you were to call each of the four suspects, and tell each one of them you saw him leave that building that night. One of them's gonna get awful nervous. Because one of them's the killer. Yeah, and it would make me awfully nervous, too, because he'd be out to kill me. No, no, he wouldn't. You just make him think. You're just looking for a little payoff. Now, your parents are out of town this weekend, aren't they? Yeah. Good. We'll use your place. Now, you tell them to be there between 9 and 9.30. Or else. Or else what? Or else at 9.30, you call the DA and you turn him in. Now he's got to show up for that. And when he does, we trap him. And we better board up the windows. That way he can't escape. What in the world are you 
doing? Uh, uh, well, we're boarding up the window. Well, I can see that, but why? Why? Uh, uh well... haven't you heard? There's been a burglar in the neighborhood, and, um, the lock on the window doesn't seem to work, so it's, um, just a precaution. Well, wouldn't it have been a lot easier to have fixed the lock? Oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> the idea. But things like this make me nervous. Well, think about something else. How can I think about something else when I'm talking to somebody? Well, I know you can do it. Hey, hey you, you rang four times and nobody answered. Oh. Maybe he's not home. Oh. oh uh, hello? Hello. Hello? Yes, hello. Is this Mr. Richard Caffey? Yes. He's the one with the close eyes. Oh, Mr. Caffey, the last... Well, then forget it. Becker's the account. Mr. Caffey, last... Kathy is the vice president. Oh, hold on a second, Mr. Caffey. Caffey's got close eyes. Would you be quiet? Oh. Uh, Mr. Caffey, last Tuesday night, I saw a certain party leave the rear of the Kraft Parsons building at about 8.30. What's that got to do with me? Well, I think both you and I know who that party was. Yeah? Who was it? Well, uh, look, Kathy, uh, we have to make a little deal. Uh, be at 628 Elm Street by 9.30 tonight or else. Or else what? 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 You'll call the DA. Uh, or else I'll call the DA. You got it? Oh, well, that wasn't half bad, really. All right, who's next on the list? Uh, uh John uh, Stevens. John Stevens. Five, 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 three, five, oh, one. Three, three, five, what? Oh, one. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Just rotten. What are you doing here? You could scare a person to death. Okay, but I'm getting awfully tired of these bushes, Mike. Can't we just call it quits for tonight? It is only 9.30. Maybe his watch was slow or something. Yeah, he didn't synchronize. Look, he's gonna be here. Okay. I don't want Let's this. Let's call this quits pretty soon. I mean, I'm beginning to itch. The bushes scratch my glasses. I have a headache. Of all jobs to give me, they give me the dumbest job. Why me? I didn't do anything. I don't believe it. I really don't... Don't forget to leave the door ajar! Department, please, and hurry. Car 74, come in. Car 74. Charlie, there's a burglary at 628 Elm. Get over there right away. We're on our way, but it'll take a few minutes. Roger. Andy, this is Captain O'Hara. I'm over at Cypress and Peach. Elm's only a couple of blocks away. I'll hit the place before the guy has a chance to get away. Okay, Captain. But be careful. Andy, I've been a cop for 16 years. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
This is for real. Get in there. You gotta send a squad car over to 628 Elm and hurry. Oh, oh, Andy, and get a hold of my dad. Mike, we got a hold of your dad. Oh. 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 Hi, Dad. We've got to get him out of there. Do you think it's safe? No, but we can't just leave him in there. Why not? Well, maybe we can explain. We? I, I can't explain anything. Norman, I can't do it by myself. You're gonna have to help me. Now, come on, please. Oh. I don't know quite what to say, Dad, but there's been this terrible mistake. Yeah, yeah, sure yeah, terrible. Explain it. Give me a minute, Dad. I can explain. It's a simple explanation. Really? Yeah, I'm yeah, sure I can explain. Really? Terrible. But give me a minute. You're ruining it. You're making it Did you worse. catch him, Captain? Mike, what in the world's the matter with the captain? I've never seen him quite like this before. Yeah, and I think he's gonna get a lot worse before he gets better. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I broke the yoke. Bad enough with the papers blasting me the way they are, but beyond that, to be humiliated in front of my own men. I didn't mean for that to happen. I think every time you interfere, something like this happens. Not every time. Yes, every time. Look, I know there's always been a policeman in the family, and I guess this business does get into your blood, so maybe you're not completely to blame. Well, it's not in my blood anymore. After what happened last night, I'm through. From now on, I'm Michael O'Hara, young lady. Just the way you want me. Is that a promise? That's a promise. Scout's on there. Oh, by the way, the phone rang about 7 this morning when I was in the shower. What was that about? Oh, that was Norman. What do you want to set on the morning? Basically, to find out if I was still alive. What'd you tell him? I told him barely. He wanted to know if, if I could go to Danny Oltzel's party tonight. Told him no. Well, since you promised a reform, okay. Oh, thank you, Dad. Be home by midnight and remember, no monkey business. I said scout's honor. Yeah, I know that. Well, then what's the matter? You're not a scout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the best. <laughs> I got it fixed now. Yeah, I think that ought to do it. It's dirty in there. I think that ought to do it now, Mike. You know, it's a good thing I kept these coveralls in the back. Can you imagine how dirty I'd be if I had to go to a party looking like this? It covered me up perfect. There we go. Wipe my hands off. 
then we'll go. What's the matter, Mike? He lied. Who lied? The janitor. Oh, you mean Grabowski? Yeah. Norman, didn't he say he saw someone go through the back door? Nobody went through the back door. They couldn't have. Well, why not? Because if one of them had gone through the back door, he would have been at your house last night. He would have had to. Otherwise, you would have turned them in, and they wouldn't take that chance. Well, I really didn't see anybody anyway. I know, but they don't know that. Now, you told each one of them you saw him leave through the back door that night, right? Right. Well, you know what that means. What? That the killer went out through the front door, and Grabowski had to be covering for him. Why would he do that? I mean, why wouldn't he have told the police? Well, I'm not quite sure about that, but it just may be that Grabowski is blackmailing the killer. Well, there's only one thing we can do about that, Norman. Yeah, go to the party. No, we're going to go to Grabowski's house. Either way... Grabowski's? Yes, if he's a killer, we're going to find some evidence. If he's a blackmailer, we're going to find some evidence, too, although I don't think he's a killer. He looks more like the blackmailing type to me. Either way, now, we're going to have to... Wait a minute, right Mike, now, otherwise... just wait a minute. You told me just this morning that you had told your dad that you were not going to interfere in police work anymore. But all of that has changed. We're on to something big. My father would understand perfectly. Hey, Norman, why don't you take the bedroom and I'll go back over there and start with the desk. Well, what am I looking for? Uh, anything a blackmailer would use. It could be pictures or letters or tapes or recordings, anything like that. Go on. must be the duplicate set to the ones he has at work. Herman, what are you doing? There's something about this guy's style that I just don't quite understand. Norman, would you please just look for evidence? You're no art critic. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm not an art critic. I'm a housebreaker. blackmailing craft. I mean, otherwise, how can he afford all of this expensive stuff? Mike! Oh, 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 oh my finger! Oh. If he was getting money out of Kraft, why would he kill him? Why would he kill him? Yeah, why? Uh, Kraft threatened to go to the police, so Grabowski shot him. That's it. That is it! Norman, come on, we have to go to my dad. Wait, 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 my finger! Oh, 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 oh. Mm. Are you okay? Yeah. I mean, is it okay? Look, look, Mike, this is only a theory. Do you really think your dad will buy all this? He will. As soon as he checks this gun and finds that it, it fired the bullet that killed Stuart Kraft. Thank you. Well, uh, is Dad in? 
Mike, unless it's really important, I wouldn't bother him at all tonight. Oh, it's really important. Uh, Mike? Huh? He's got another murder in his hands. Another murder? Yeah. The fellow by the name of Grabowski is a janitor down the Kraft Parsons building. They found him dead about an hour ago. Murdered? Grabowski? That's impossible. What do you mean, impossible? Uh... Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, no. And after that, call the four suspects and tell them to meet me in Kraft's office tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Will do, Captain. Any where, old boy? Are they still at the Kraft Farthing building? Yeah, you want me to give them a rain? No, no, let them finish. But as soon as Bud and Bob get back, have them check on the Grabowski house. There may be something there that'll help us. Oh, and uh, have Dorothy file this. Right. Well, what are you kids doing here? I thought you went to a party. Oh, we did, but it was over early. Uh, we just came by to say hello. Well, I'm awful busy, so hello. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm sorry about Mr. Grabowski. I'm sorry? I didn't think you knew him. No, I don't know him. I'm just always sorry when I've heard someone's been murdered. Oh, I see. Mike? Huh? Just be sorry. That's all. Of course, Dad. Only good? Yeah, I got Beckard Stevens. I'm working on Parsons now. Right. Well, there goes another theory. Yeah, I guess we were right the first time. It is one of those four guys. One Grabowski was blackmailing. Yeah, I think your dad's got to figure that way, too. That's why he's yeah. sending men out to Grabowski's house. Yeah. Hey, oh, that, that reminds me. I... Norman. Hi, Mike. How are you? Oh, fine, Larry. Hey, Norman. How are you doing? Uh, just fine, Larry. See you. Yeah. Bye. Norman, are you trying to get us arrested? Well, weren't we going to give the gun to your dad? Well, we were, but now... Now that Grabowski's dead, we know it's not the murder weapon. Anyway, I brought it up to my dad. He just accused me of meddling. Hey, Norman, you want to go someplace for a hamburger or something? That's a good idea. I'm home. So am I. Mike, my wallet's gone. Oh, that's okay. I've got some money right here. Oh, no, it's, it's not okay. I've got money, and it's in my wallet, and it's, uh, it's gone. Well, maybe it's in the Jeep. Let me check. Wait a minute, Mike. I wonder if it could have dropped out of my pocket when I went through that window. Grabowski's? Yeah. Oh, no. They're on their way over there and they're gonna find it. Come on, we gotta go. Oh. we got to do is put this gun back. I didn't be caught carrying a concealed weapon. Oh, no, you hurry. Oh. Be careful. Oh, I thought I'd be doing this again. Oh. Somebody sure ransacked this place. You're upset because we just missed him? I wonder if he found what he was looking for. Mike, I just had a terrible thought. What? What if we didn't just miss him? Oh, Norman, don't be such a scaredy cat. Come on, give me the gun and I'll put it away. It'd be funny if when the police check the gun, they find your fingerprints all over it. Yeah, that would be hilarious. I can't find it anywhere. I wonder if I could have left it in my other trousers. Hey, the bedroom. I might have dropped it while I was in there.
right? like he clobbered. No, I think you're going to be here. Sit down. Oh, no blood. Oh. Oh. Let me see it. Oh. Oh, ow. I'm sorry. Uh. Yeah, I, I think he just grazed it. Mike, what's that funny smell? Huh? What smell? Oh, that must mm. be the wine. Wine? Oh, I had to bring you around with something. You, you poured wine all over me? Well, it's the only thing I oh. can find. Oh, oh. Here, here, let me see if I can find some ice. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good. Ice. Oh. oh, Norman? Yeah? Remember those keys that were in the drawer? Oh, yeah, yeah. A bunch of them? Mm. Well, they're gone. Mm. Now, why would he take the keys? Oh, well, he, he probably wants to get into the building. Huh? Oh. Oh, no. Oh. Here. Yeah, but see, all those guys have their own set of keys to the building. Yeah. Now, there has to be another reason. But what? Well, there were a million keys on that ring. Maybe he wants to get into one of the other offices. No. A janitor wouldn't put something in somebody else's office. He doesn't have an office of his own, so it could... That's it. What? That's it, Norman. Every janitor has a room or a locker, you know, where he keeps his supplies and his belongings. Well, that's it. The killer didn't find the blackmail evidence here, so I'll bet he's gone over there to find it. That's why he took the keys. Come on, Norman, we gotta go get oh, them. Wait, 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 I can't go, I can't, I, I'm winery, I smell like I want my head. What about my wallet? Come on, Norman, we're one step behind the killer. Come on, get up. Oh, my head hurts. Oh, it's the police. What? I'll the wheel. I'll the wheel. Oh, oh. So we told him we'd pick it up for him. Oh. Well, if it's for the captain, I guess it'll be okay. Okay, Pete, you can let him in. Thanks, Tony. All right, Mike. Did you see the way that police smelled? He smelled the wine. Oh, Norman, you're just being self-conscious. You don't smell at all. Really? I mean in the building. He had a key, remember? Oh, that's better. If he was looking for something in here, he evidently didn't find it. What a mess. Well, let's look anyway. He might have overlooked something. Well, he didn't overlook anything over here. Well, try somewhere else. Try over there. Oh. Hey, here's his lunchbox. Do you think he'd hide something in here? Well, that's as good a place as any. The point is, he hid something somewhere, and we gotta find it. Oh, it's just some sandwiches and an apple. Oh. Would you be careful? The place is messy enough without you dumping his lunch. 
I didn't do it on purpose. My head hurts. And I do smell. Hey, Mike, there's something crazy here. This thing looks like it has a false bottom. trouble just to hear America the Beautiful? I mean, I'm patriotic and all that. Norman, do you think that this is a decoy so if anyone finds these tapes, they would think it was just regular music? I don't know. My head hurts. Oh, keep the ice on it. Here, I'll put this one on. No, no, let, let, let me do it. It says, Hail Columbia, the gem of the ocean. What? Well, now that's got to be a phony label. Either that, or it's the blackmailer's code. Put it on. Oh, Columbia, the gem of the ocean, the home of the brave and the free, the shrine of each patriot's devotion. It's enough, I tell you. It's enough. You've had it. Honest, I'm through. I'm not going to do it anymore. That's what you said six weeks ago. That's what you said a month ago. And that's what you said last week. Now, I'm telling you, you've stolen all you're going to from this firm. I'm turning you in. Give me a week. One week. I'll, I'll figure out a way to get the money. Give me a chance. That's all I ask. You've had all the chances you're going to get. Now, I've been patient enough. Be reasonable. If, if you turn me in, you'll never get the money back. I'll never get the money back anyway. I gave you a chance in this company, and you betrayed that trust. I know, but I'll make it up, I promise. We're through talking. Now, I'm sorry it has to end this way, but I'm calling the police. Oh, wow. That does it. But we don't even know who that was. No, but they do. They? Yeah, the guys who work at the company. If one of them's a killer, he knows. And I heard Dad tell every one of them he wants them all at the Kraft Parsons building at 10 o'clock in the morning. What's that got to do with us? Easy. We're going to be, be there, there too. too. Yes, Mr. Parsons. Ellen, will you come in, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right Would you take these across the hall, please? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
her office would like for you to call. Oh. I have written down. Oh, a Lieutenant Bronson. Would you like to use Mr. Kraft's office? It's private to be more comfortable. Oh, thank you. <gasps> what are you doing here? Dad! Oh, hi, Captain O'Hara. Mike, what's going on here? Look, Dad, this time is for sure. We found some tapes in the janitor's locker. What were you doing in the janitor's locker? Now, Dad, I know we weren't supposed to be in there, but one of these tapes is an actual recording of the Kraft murder. You, you mean you're going to play this thing over the intercom? Now, Mike, if you think for one minute that you're going to humiliate me in front of my men... Now, Dad, I promise, if you'll just take one minute to listen, there won't be any mix-up this time. Please believe me. As you know, last night, Mr. Grabowski, the custodian, was murdered. That's the second murder in this establishment in the past week. I think we're all in agreement that someone in this room is guilty of those crimes. Up to now, uh, the identity of the killer has been unknown. However, some vital new evidence has come up, which clearly points to the identity of the murderer. going on here? Stay where you are, John. I'll never get the money back anyway. I gave you a chance in this company, and you betrayed that trust. I know, but I'll make it up, I promise. We're through talking. Now, I'm sorry it has to end this way, but I'm calling the police. You don't understand. I didn't want to. I, I had to. It would have meant jail. Mr. Caffey, I think we'd better get down to the station and have a talk. As you know, it's your privilege to call your attorney, and you need make no statement until he arrives. Yes, sir. Three. Right this way. Mm. Well, I'll have some. So Grabowski didn't make those tapes? No, it was Kraft himself. He had a tape recorder he kept on his desk. He used to record business conversations. On the night of the murder, when Cappy came in, evidently he had left it on. Hmm. But how does the janitor figure into all this? Well, when he found the body, he also found the tape machine still running. So he used it to blackmail Cappy. And then when Cappy refused to continue paying him, he threatened to go to the police, so Cappy killed him. So if Grabowski hadn't found the tape, he'd be alive today. Had he ever been mixed up in anything like this before? You mean, did he have a record? No, but we do have evidence that he was involved in another type of crime. Well, you know what they say, one crime leads to another. Herman. Well, what was it? Pickpocketing. Pickpocketing? Pickpocketing. Grabowski? Aw, oh, Dad, he didn't look like the type that... Well, uh, how do you explain Norman's wallet being found in Grabowski's house? M my wallet? Well, gee, that does sort of look like my wallet, doesn't it? I don't know what it is about Chinese restaurants, but, you know, they sure can cook peas, so they don't even taste like peas. You know what I mean, Dad? Excuse me, Captain O'Hara, you're one on the phone. It's an emergency. Thank you. Excuse me. Oh, Nathan, keep your eye on those two. 